Hey folks, welcome back. I'm Gene Dallasala, president of Audioholics, and today we are here with... Hugo Rivera, vice president of marketing. I think today we should be talking about uh, testing. How about uh, we cover the testing practices of Audioholics when it comes to loudspeakers? You know, that's a great topic. We get asked that very often, and Audioholics, myself especially, has put a lot of effort into accurately measuring and subjectively and objectively analyzing loudspeaker performance. Because we're not robots, nope. so <laughs> we might have preferences from one speaker over another, but Absolutely. I like to try to quantify that with measurements when it's possible, and mm -hmm. also figure out design flaws in products when we can. Yeah, I think that's, that's the hybrid method, which, is, which to me is the way to go about things, because you have the science part of things, and then you have the subjective part, you know? We're human beings. It's a combination of both, and mm -hmm. what I do, Hugo, is... Um, we came up, we spent about a year coming up with a acceptable loudspeaker measurement standard because there really is no standard in the industry, right. okay? And I've had uh, one of my guys that's he's really into loudspeakers. He helped draft the standard. I presented it to some of the experts in the industry, like Dr. Floyd Toole of Harmon, um, various loudspeaker engineers throughout the industry, and I had them look it over and give their comments and try to help make it better. and. Uh, you know, it was a process that took a few months, and sure. I'm pretty confident that we have a good, solid standard to compare speakers, fa you know, accurately but also fairly to each other. Mm -hmm. So you can read about the standard, or we'll put the link in the video. But even before you get into the measurements, um, what I try to do when we measure, when we evaluate a loudspeaker, is I try to listen to the product before I do any measurements at all, because what I found is if I measure a product first. I'm going to have preconceptions of what it's going to sound like. You get like. biased. Yeah. The measurement actually biases mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So we set up, we set up, we listen to the speaker over a course of several days. Um, when I can, I do comparisons. I take other products in. I do A-B comparisons. Mm -hmm. I do them sighted and I do them blind. I know everybody out there has to say you have to do a blind or it's not valid. And, you know, I do it both ways. And I like to look at the data for both. Uh, scenarios, you know, just to understand how our perception does influence the sound. Mm -hmm. But I also try to throw in an anchor product, right. you know, because our, our ears are great comparators, but we're not necessarily good at an absolute reference unless we have it in front of us. Sure. So, you know, over the 15, 20 year history of Audioholics and, and just listening to loudspeakers, I've had a couple of favorites that I think are very tonally neutral, mm -hmm. and I keep them around. Mm -hmm. And when I compare a product, I, I throw that in there just to see how it compares to it. So how, what we do is we use various sources. We use, uh, you know, we listen with vinyl, we listen with CD, SACD. We use all different formats to see how a product really sounds. That's very important too, Gene, because I think a lot of people don't realize the effect of the format on the sound that comes out of the speaker, you know? Right, right. And, you know, and the thing is, if you don't have a good source material, you might not recognize a good speaker Absolutely. from a great one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we do our listening test first. Then the next step is we do our measurements, mm -hmm. and you know we write up our measurement report, and you can see the standard again. Mm -hmm. But then we take it one step further, and you know some manufacturers get a little edgy with this, but we take the products apart. <laughs> yes, and we re we try to reverse engineer the product. You know we show the insides, we show the sum of the parts, we show you the crossovers, the cabinets, the drivers, and we just give you an, an inside view of the product that you can get when you're at a shopping center or you're yeah. at a retail store or whatever. Absolutely not. And I think personally between the subjective performance listening tests, the measurements we do, the comparison tests we do, and the inside engineering look at a product, mm -hmm. by the time you read our review and even sometimes we do videos on it, mm -hmm. I think you got a pretty good idea of how the product performs to make an educated purchasing decision. Exactly, which at, which at the end is going to come down to the customer because we all have different likes, you know. Right. And and even you know something which is not, is not a performance point, but definitely you know the the visual impression that the product gives you. I think it's important too, you know. It's a combination of everything, man. It's not just you know, like I said, we're not robots. I mean, this is going to be our new slogan for this year. We're not robots. <laughs> we're not robots. <laughs> you're not just listening to a product right. blindly. You're actually experiencing the product in your house. You're mm -hmm. living with the product. And we try to convey that in the experience right. too. Right. Some of us, I mean, are, some of us are looking just for performance. We don't care how the product looks. I can tell you this: if I show up uh, with a product that doesn't look great, my wife is not going to be happy about it. Oh, absolutely. So, <laughs> so I have to take that into consideration too. You know what I mean? So absolutely. I mean, yeah. yeah. Aesthetic, with... Aesthetics are sometimes as important. Yeah. And absolutely. sometimes even more important than the sound for some cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a, it's a combination of things, and it comes down to your decision 
at the end. You know, you are the one that determines which product is best for you. Yeah, and you know, we're happy to give you an informed decision, but ultimately, you know, use our opinion mm -hmm. and our analysis as a tool to help exactly. you make a better purchasing decision. Excellent, Gene. Is there anything else you would like to add? I think we're good on this topic. Excellent. Well, you know what? I want to go ahead and take a minute to invite people to go ahead and uh, check out our website, www.audioholics.com, where we have tons of great information, uh, as well as a wonderful newsletter where they can go ahead and sign up to. And by signing up to a newsletter, not only do they get immediately every single time that we put new information, but they also get our free 2014 Top AV Gear. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, Hugo. We created a very concise printable PDF format of the top AV, AV equipment that we've taken a look at this mm -hmm. year, whether it's receivers, Blu-ray players, subwoofers. You know, it just gives you a good guide from products that are from budget products to a little bit higher end. And uh, the, the goal there is to give you, a again, a good purchasing option when you're in a market of a lot of products. Absolutely, because there are certainly plenty. So, excellent. If you like this video, please click like on the button below and also feel free to share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, and share your comments below. Let us know how we're doing and what type of other videos you'd like to see. Anyways, thanks again for being with us and until next time, keep, keep listening. listening.